welcome to the final concert of Bakersfield Symphony Orchestra's 92nd season. My name is Holly Arnold and I'm the Executive Director. This season has been fantastic. Our audience continues to grow, our family concerts attract new audience members to the orchestra, and our BSO Next Education program is reaching more students than ever before. In fact, that we welcome over 500 students from schools throughout Kern County, all the way from Lamont to Delano. Thank you to right. Thank you to the sponsors and donors who make this possible, and for the teachers who believe in the importance of the arts and give up their time to invest in our students. You all make a difference. Thank you. Additionally, yes. Additionally. You, all of you, please help me thank the fantastic student volunteers who help in the lobby and the wonderful Bakersfield Youth Symphony members who gave a great performance in the lobby before the concert. In addition, we have about 30 volunteers from high schools and colleges throughout our community who do a fantastic job helping in the lobby and uh, we are just so well so thrilled to have just such remarkable students in our community, just fantastic students. A special thank you to Mrs. Louise May for generously sponsoring this concert in memory of her husband, William May. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. May have been dear friends of the symphony for many years and are true treasures in our community. Thank you, Mrs. May. Our guest artist this evening is world-renowned pianist Roman Rabinovich, who is renowned for his multifaceted musical artistry, earning acclaim in, as a soloist, curator, and collaborator. Roman has performed with some of the greatest orchestras and under the greatest conductors in the world, and has also been referred to as one of the greatest pianists today. We are thrilled to bring his talent to our local stage. And as part of our education outreach programs, our guest artists are scheduled to hold master classes rotating between our local colleges. These are made free and all the students are invited. And just yesterday, over 50 students attended a master class at CSUB and including students from Bakersfield Youth Symphony. And we are so proud to offer this to our local students and we thank that all the sponsors of our education programs who make this possible. This evening marks a milestone for the symphony. Tonight we debut the first winning piece of the Composer Discovery Project that we launched earlier in the fall, named in honor of Catherine M. Erner and made possible by the contribution from the Barbara Erner and Gordon K. Johnson Family Trust. Barbara and Gordon were patrons of the BSO for many decades and wanted to give back to, back to the orchestra that had been such a strong musical presence in their lives and in their family's lives and the community. The concert will open with Discovery winner, Doug, Dr. Doug Davis's beautiful piece, Dust Swirls, Then Speaks, A Journey to Hope. Congratulations to Doug Davis. <laughs> now I'd like to introduce Lauren Johnson and Cynthia Johnson George, great nephew and niece of Catherine M. Erner, who also have ties to the symphony, as both of them performed with the symphony when, while they were in high school, back when it was known as Kern Philharmonic. So let me introduce uh, Lauren and Cynthia. Thank you, Holly. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to uh, introduce the first year of the Discovery uh, Com Composer Discovery Program here. Um, my parents, Gordon Johnson and Barbara Erner Johnson, lived here for 55 years, and they were staunch supporters of the symphony, uh, patrons, uh, came to all the concerts, and um, my mother, was also a native, born in 1923 here. She attended concerts uh, as a young child, and they passed their, their passion for music on to us. Uh, as young people, I think we attended our first concerts when we were probably about eight years old uh, in old Harvey Auditorium where the Kern Philharmonic played. Um, we uh, moved through the 
Bakersfield City Schools. Uh, we played, both played in the orchestra and it became a big part of our life. Um, our mother, as she got older, started to look into the genealogy of her family, the Erner family, and she came upon her aunt, Catherine Erner, who was a poet, a singer, uh, and a composer, and had lived in Paris during the 20s and 30s and studied under the composer Charles Kecklin who uh, was the composer of a lot of very new and innovative music at the time. Catherine's music blossomed under him, and she wrote a lot of music. Uh, he orchestrated a lot of that music, but was not recognized at the time. And it's something that has continued uh, to uh, follow new composers and new music uh, throughout the industry. And so we, we are honored that um, we could, in her name, Catherine Erner, start this uh, discovery project here um, with the financial contribution from my parents' estate. Uh, it's a fitting tribute uh, to both them and to Catherine Erner. I'd like to have my sister now give a few more words. Thank you, Lord. I am so excited to be here again. You know, the last time I attended a concert of the BSO, I came on the Rosewood bus with my mom. Are there Rosewood folks out here tonight? Let me hear from you. Great. I'm really excited to speak with you about two composers. The first, as my brother mentioned, Catherine Erner, whose name is linked to the Conductor Discovery Project, and Dr. Doug Davis, whose piece was selected as the inaugural composition. As I have learned more about Doug Davis and his work, I was intrigued to find remarkable similarities between Doug and our relative Catherine. Both earned recognition in college for their compositional mastery. Both moved to Paris to study. Both were teachers passionate about sharing their musical knowledge with others. Catherine was, however, greatly hampered during her lifetime in presenting her work. She lived through World War II, she died an early death. So there are all these boxes of her music unpublished in the UC Berkeley Music Library. It takes energy and financial resources to prepare and present new music. And I'm so pleased that our parents' donation will continue to support the presentation of new compositions in future seasons. One of Catherine's pieces was, however, played by this wonderful orchestra 25 years ago, right here. It was called Normandy Sketches, and it was a piece that paints a picture of a place, the Normandy coast of France. It's the kind of music that tells a story. Doug Davis' work that you will hear shortly is also the kind of piece that tells a story. It paints visual images with sounds and reminds us of historical events, in this case, those surrounding the Dust Bowl era. I heard it last night at rehearsal, and you know, you're gonna love it. It's just great. Speaking of the Dust Bowl, our mom was part of that history. Maybe some of you were too. At age 16, she, with others, stood on the Kern County Library steps to protest the banning and burning of the book, Grapes of Wrath. She felt strongly about an author's right to tell a story. And now this story will be told in music. Our parents would be so pleased that Doug's composition has been chosen as the inaugural work in this conductor's project. Many of you may already know Doug Davis and his work, but I'm extremely pleased right now to present him to you, and he will tell you more about what to listen for in his incredible piece, Dust Swirls Then Speaks, A Journey to Hope. Doug? Thank you very much. So pleased to share this composition inspired by Steinbeck's Grapes of Wrath, but really inspired by the extraordinary journeys that are part of all our family histories. Certainly the opening of my composition evokes the landscape of desolation after years of drought and enormous 
dust storms really stripped away any possibility of continuation. The picture is sparse and quiet and bleak. But as the title states, the dust swirls, then speaks. As in Steinbeck's novel, a decision must be made to move on, to pack up what you can and head out for a better life. After the decision, the musical journey begins in earnest. A journey that's trying to cover ground, trying to keep the engine running, and taking an occasional moment to dream. Over two million people left the heartland of America for a better life, for a future. Many found their way to California and to the farmlands and oil fields of the San Joaquin Valley. This was their journey to hope. Glad to share the music with you. Thank you. If you've ever attended a final concert of the season in the past, you know that Maestro Kirov is going to leave you waiting for the season to start again in the fall. Season tickets are on sale now, and they will. if you're interested in securing season tickets, you can drop a card in the, at the information table in the lobby. Those current season ticket holders now will have until July 31st to renew their seats. We're excited to kick off our next season with a, a new event, an opening night celebration called the Taste of the Season, featuring food and drinks that represent composers that were going to perform their works throughout the season. It'll be a fun event and a key fundraising event for the symphony's education and concert programming. We'll be seeking sponsors and hope to see all of you there. Early bird ticket prices are available all next week until Friday the 10th. By the way, Maestro Kirov, Mr. Rabinovich, Doug Davis, and many of our musicians will visit in the lobby after the concert, so don't rush out. And again, thank you to all of you who made the 92nd season so possible, and we look forward to seeing you in the fall as we celebrate our 93rd season. So now I'd like to introduce you to your Bakersfield Symphony Orchestra, led by Maestro Kira. Thank you, enjoy. <laughs>